Welcome to PHI, Public Health Impact. Public Health Impact is a series of television shows on the effect or impact of public health in our daily lives, with each episode on a different aspect of public health. And today's show is on the aging population and older adults. Well, we're all getting older. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Well, speak for yourself, Jim. Seriously. We're at different stages of that. Uh, for instance, my family for the last 15 years cared for my parents, but they've passed on now. And I'm at the stage where my parents and my in-laws are still very healthy, but we're starting to have those important conversations about what happens when their health declines and how do they want to be cared for. Well, I guess that puts me on the upper end of that scale. Well, I sure hope your grandkids are watching then. <laughs> I hope they are too. And today we'll be talking to internationally recognized experts in the field of aging. And Chan will be interviewing our colleagues at the College of Public Health Institute of Gerontology. I'm looking forward to this. older adults in our population just keeps growing and growing both in numbers and in a proportion of the total and given this dramatic change in the population here uh, not only in the nation but in the state of Georgia we're going to go to Dr. Leonard Poon distinguished research professor and director of the Institute of Gerontology here at the University of Georgia Dr. Poon tell us about the gerontology program here at the University of Georgia well, the gerontology program has been around since 1964. Well, I was about nine years old then, so that's been around a while. Yes, it has. Uh, it started out as an all university institute, and it still is. And since 2005, the institute joined the College of Public Health as one of the units within the college. Okay, well, let's define our terms here. What is gerontology? Well, gerontology, to put it very simply, it's a study of the aging processes. Now this is different than geriatrics, and geriatrics is the care of the elders. Here at the university and the college, we have both gerontology and geriatrics. Okay, well, well tell us how your research and training in gerontology and geriatrics serves the needs of the state. Well, we do that by providing information to healthcare workers and also to train healthcare workers. An example of some of these program is we have a federally funded geriatric education center and its mission is to upgrade the expertise of healthcare professionals, especially physicians, uh, in their uh, skills in working with older people. Okay, now that we have an understanding what gerontology is, tell us how gerontology contributes to public health. Well, as I stated earlier, uh, by providing information and upgrading the skills and expertise of people working with older adults. So, what are the statistics of aging that are real, they're really changing right now in our society? Well, this is a very exciting time. Uh, for a long, long time, the proportion of older adults has been running about 8 to 10 percent. Mm -hmm. So, it's a very small proportion of our population. But then after World War II, uh, we have a generation called the baby boomers. And they changed the dynamics of our population. So imagine uh, our population is like a triangle. We have a lot of uh, younger people, but not too many older people. But with the baby boomers, that triangle become a rectangle. And then we have as many older people perhaps as younger people. Okay, well that really gets us into the Social Security issue and, and that's something that people understand. They, you know, years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, we had plenty of younger people paying for a smaller number of older people and that's changed now. And it looks like we may not have a viable economic way of, of keeping that going now because of this change in the uh, population of older people in our society. And this is a wonderful demonstration of exactly what's happening is that as we have more retirees and less people working to support the retirees, uh, we, we could have a system that could bankrupt the bank. 
I think people understand that now, particularly with the economy the way it's going. We just don't have enough resources to take care of everything. Well, since this is obviously a problem for the future, what kind of training uh, do we need and you're doing uh, in, in the Institute of Gerontology to deal with this important issue? Well, let, let me just give you three different examples. First, when we joined the College of Public Health in 2005, we devised a program called Public Health and Older Georgians. And this is to provide information to public health workers about national statistics, issues of public health within the state of Georgia, as well as resources within the University of Georgia uh, for people to use. The second program that we have is the Geriatric Education Center that I mentioned earlier to train healthcare uh, workers with older adults. And then the third one is we thought everyone, regardless of age, should know something about aging. And this is a program called Aging 101. And we have a, a video program that we, we pass it out to people for, for free so that they can have that information. Okay, with all these older people becoming an ever-increasing part of our society, tell us how a student that wants to specialize in gerontology, how would they go about that if they wanted to specialize or to work with uh, some part of the public health infrastructure or with elderly people? Well, as noted earlier, um, the Institute served the entire university. So any graduate students interested in getting content information can get a 18-hour graduate certificate of gerontology. The second thing is that since now we are part of the College of Public Health, uh, we can infuse aging expertise into different programs uh, for people to specialize in aging uh, in the Masters of Public Health program. And currently we, ha we could do this in two programs. First is health policy and management. The other one is health promotion and behavior. Well, I hope this encourages uh, more people to go into this very important field and deal with this, this issue that's not going away anytime soon. All right, let's turn to research in gerontology at the University of Georgia. Among the many programs you've been doing, what are the ones that have received the most attention in increasing our understanding about the aging process? Well, at the University of Georgia, we have about 22 departments uh, that's doing work in aging. And they range from biology, physiology, kinesiology, psychology, sociology, all the way to social work. Uh, however, uh, the one program that uh, perhaps uh, was most noted is the so-called Georgia Centenarian Study. And this is a federally funded research program that began in 1988. And we just finished the third phase of our research in 2009. Okay, well, tell us about this long-standing and internationally acclaimed program uh, in Centenarian Research. The, the Centenarians are the people that, that live to be 100 years old and even older. What is it about this group of people uh, that seem to be outliving the rest of us? Well, first of all, there aren't that many centenarian studies. There are two such in the U.S. and about 10 around the world. So there's only two centenarian study groups in the United States, and the University of Georgia is one of those. That's correct. The other one's in New England. Okay. Well, why is this information so important to us. So what, what is it that would allow us to, to live longer like they do? Is it possible for me to live longer? I, I guess the other side of that coin would be, what is it that I might be doing that's preventing me from living longer? Well, you can certainly not become a centenarian. Uh, and, and we know that public health recommendations is very, very important. And so there's many things that you can do that shorten your life. Okay, so let's look at some of those. Uh, heredity is one of them, certainly. Heredity is, you know, what we get from our parents or maybe from our ancestors. Uh, and then there's environment, like uh, lifestyle, um, stress, uh, diet, exercise, or lack of exercise. Well, why don't you tell us about 
how heredity and environment uh, impact on this ability to live longer or not live longer? Well, our research shows that both are important, um, but the relative importance is really not known at this point. Uh, the best research we have shows that perhaps genetics account for about 30 percent of longevity, and then maybe the, the rest of them, maybe 70 percent, uh, is due to the environment, lifestyles, and so on and so forth. Okay, well my grandparents, for instance, they all four of them live to uh, 87 up to about 95, so does that mean I'm in pretty good shape? Well, it looks like you have a good start, okay. uh, but, but it is important uh, to really think about your lifestyles and environment, too, and, and, and practice the appropriate uh, behavior for longevity. Well, I'll try to avoid those risky behaviors. Uh, I'll, I'll be good. Uh, tell us about your research that uh, addresses the aging brain. Um, are, are some of us wearing our brains out? Uh, what have you learned from the aging brain research that you've done? Well, we do have a, a, uh, a brain or neuropathology program mm -hmm. within the centenarian study. Uh, and in fact, we have the largest brain bank of centenarians in the world, about 60 brains. And what we're doing is that we are very much interested in the relationship between brain and behavior for those who survive into old age versus those who do not. And what it is looking like is that the relationship between brain and behavior for centenarians is very, very different than those who are younger. So just to sum this up, what has your research found uh, to be important in us living you know, to a ripe old age? What would you tell us if we wanted to live a longer, uh, healthier life? Well, the data from the Georgia Centenarian study show for the first time that the public health recommendation for healthy living is also mm -hmm. important for people who's lived a long time. So many of the recommendations are very, very similar, and our data supports those recommendations. So perhaps the first thing that I could recommend is that public health recommendation is important. The issues of exercise, diet, uh, lowering stress, and so on are important if one wants to live to 100. The second one is from observation of our centenarians, is that moderation is very important. Okay, so I think I'm getting it down here. Uh, uh, diet, exercise, and the other uh, public health guidelines that they've given us already, and moderation. That's uh, certainly a goal for us all to work toward.